بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد الإمام البخاري رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned in his book الأدب المفرد باب الكرم Babu al Karam, the chapter about al Karam, and the word al Karam, it means ijtima'u sifat al Khairi wa Sharaf. The one who has al Karam is the one who has gathered all of the attributes of nobility and goodness, all of the attributes of nobility and goodness. And many times Al-Karam is used to refer to generosity and being generous and giving people uh, from one's wealth and giving charity a lot. This is known as Al-Karam. But in reality, the word Al-Karam, it means more than that. Not only being generous with wealth, but likewise being generous with manners and conduct. And uh, being generous with a smile, and being generous with good manners, and with patience, and with forbearance, and being generous with knowledge, and teaching people, and advice, and advising them whenever they're in need, and uh, being good, and honorable, and noble, and upright in all circumstances, this is from Al-Karam, and this is from generosity and nobility. So the one who was Karim, he is the person who has many, many attributes of goodness. Many, many traits that are very nice and good, like trustworthiness and truthfulness, and like honesty and loyalty, and like kindness and forbearance and patience, and like a sincere advisor and uh, a teacher and a helper. This is all from Sifat al Karam. And likewise, being generous and preferring others over oneself and having ithar. All of these are from the beautiful traits of a believer that is kareem. And al-mu'min la shakannahu kareem. And the believer, no doubt, he is noble. He is noble and kind and generous and nice. And whenever the iman is stronger and whenever the faith is deeply rooted in the heart, then the believer, he'll be even more nice. And he'll be even more kind and he'll be even more generous and he'll be even more noble and have greater honor and respect and nobility. And this is what Al-Imam Al-Bukhari is referring to in this chapter. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. He mentioned a chain of narration to Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. And he said, Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked, Ayun nasi akram? He was asked, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which of the people is the most noble? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akramuhum indallahi atqahum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the most noble of the people with Allah is the one who fears him the most. The one who has the most taqwa. Meaning the one who has the most sincere faith and hope and trust and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who is most obedient and the one who is most obedient. So the one who is most obedient and uh, pious and upright, then he is the one who is the most noble with Allah. And Allah, he mentioned this in his book, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ That verity, the most noble of you with Allah is the one who fears him the most. قَالُوا لَيْسَ عَنْ هَذَا نَسْأَلُكَ at this time, they said, we're not talking about that. We're not asking you about that. This was something that they're not referring to. Whenever they say who is the most noble, they're not referring to this issue here and yeah, about piety and righteousness. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, قَالَ فَأَكْرَمُ النَّاسِ يُوسُفْ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ إِبْنُ نَبِيُّ اللَّهِ إِبْنِ خَلِلِ اللَّهِ At this time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, oh, then... If that's not what we're asking about, then the most noble of the people is Yusuf. 
He is the Prophet of Allah, who is the son of the Prophet of Allah, who is the son of the Khalil of Allah. And this is very, very noble. Yusuf is the, is the Prophet of Allah, who is the son of a Prophet of Allah, who is the son of the Khalil of, uh, uh, of Allah. And so they said, Qalu, Laysa an hadha nas'aluka. <laughs> and so the companions, they said, Allah anhum, this is not what we're asking about. This is not what we're asking about. Qala, فَعَنْ مَعَادٍ الْعَرَبْ تَسْأَلُونِي So now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, is it the Ma'adin of the Arab that you're asking me about? Yani the Ma'adin, what is referring to here, meaning the lineage. Meaning the lineage. Is it the lineage of the Arabs that you're asking me about? Qalu na'am. They said, yes, we're asking about the issue of the lineage of the Arabs. Which one is the most noble? So at this time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned a beautiful response. He mentioned a beautiful response. فَخِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ خِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ إِذَا فَقُهُ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, So the most noble and the best of you in the times of Jahiliyyah is the best of you in Islam. So long as you gain an understanding in the religion. So long as you gain an understanding in the religion. Meaning that those people who before they accepted Islam, they had a high status and rank. They were known for nobility and honor. And they had a lot of good characteristics and traits. And everybody liked them in their society. And they had ranks amongst their tribes and in their society. And the likes, they'll likewise, if they enter into Islam, they'll be the best as well. And they'll have the highest rank and honor. So long as they, so long as they gain an understanding in the religion. So we see here that it's not sufficient to have a good lineage or to have respect in society without knowledge in the deen. And maybe somebody, he will have a very noble lineage and maybe he will have a, a father and a grandfather who was upright and very nice and known for many good things. But if his deeds are no good and he does not have a good understanding in the religion, that will not help him. But... If he were to have a noble lineage and to have forefathers who have been known for generosity and kindness and for good affairs, and he himself likewise is like them and he's upright as well, then this is good on top of good and light on top of light. If somebody came from a noble background and he himself is righteous, then this is beautiful. But if a person came from a noble background and, the, and then he himself is disobedient and ignorant and... Uh, the likes, then that lineage will not benefit him so long as he did not gain an understanding in their religion. And likewise, even if somebody came from a background that's not so good, that's not so good, his background is not so good, but then he gained an understanding in the religion, then he will be raised and elevated in ranks even above those who have a great lineage if they did not have fiqh and understanding in their religion. If they did not have fiqh and understanding in their religion. So the true means to have nobility and honor with Allah Azza wa Jal is to have knowledge. Is to have knowledge of the deen. To have knowledge of it tawheed. And to have knowledge of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to have knowledge of the halal and the haram. And to apply that knowledge sincerely. And to apply that knowledge sincerely. In this manner, a believer, he can have great ranks and he can be noble and have much respect and honor with Allah first and foremost and likewise with the people and likewise with the people after this referring back to this affair the importance of knowledge and understanding in the religion and the importance of application of the deen in order to have nobility and honor and the one who learns the religion and he applies it, then he will have many beautiful traits. He will have many beautiful characteristics. Because Al-Islam, it calls to all beautiful and noble traits and characteristics. And it forbids from every foul and wicked and bad and lowly mannerism. And lowly mannerism. So the one who learns and applies it, then he will be raised and he will be elevated. And Allah, He said this in His book. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ That Allah, He will raise in ranks those who believe amongst you. And likewise, those who have knowledge, He will raise them in levels and in degrees. 
After this, Al-Bukhari, he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Babu Fadli Man Yu'ulu Yateeman. Babu Fadli Man Yu'ulu Yateeman. Now, we continue reading, and he mentioned, Rahimahullah, the chapter, the virtue of the one who takes care of an orphan. And no doubt, there's a great virtue in taking care of orphans. And no doubt, no one will be able to establish that great right except for somebody with nobility and honor. And it takes great respect and uh, kindness in the heart and very beautiful traits of sincerity and of ithar and showing preference and having concern and care for others to take care of those who are weak. And this is something that Islam encourages. And from the beauty of Islam is that we are, we are ordered to be nice and to be kind to those who are weak and to take care of them and to not take advantage of them and to not use them and to not put them down, but rather to help them but rather to help them. Like here we have the issue now of the orphan. Before we seen the issue of the children. And we likewise seen specifically the issue of the female children. The children themselves, they're weak and they can easily be taken advantage of. And likewise, the female children from them are even weaker and could even more easily be taken advantage of. But Islam encourages the believers to take care of them and to raise them and to protect them and to clothe them and to feed them and to keep them safe. To keep them safe physically and to keep them safe spiritually. Keep them safe physically by keeping them away from bad people and harmful things and feeding them with the good and the nourishing food. And to keep them safe spiritually by teaching them and cultivating them and raising them upon Islam and teaching them about Tawheed and the beauty of a Tawheed and uh, teaching them about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how wonderful his Sunnah is and warning them from shirk and misguidance and deviation and warning them from innovation and all these other bad and filthy ways. This is from having concern for them. And likewise, just as well, the orphans, they have no fathers to take care of them. They have no fathers to take care of them. And some of them, they have no fathers and no mothers to take care of them whatsoever. And the people of knowledge, they mentioned that the yatim, the one who was an orphan, he is the one who lost his father before he reached the age of puberty. And there are two types. The one who was born with no father and the one who lived with his father a, a brief period, but his father died before he reached the age of puberty. So the child who has no father before the age of puberty, he's considered an orphan. He's considered an orphan. And even sometimes that could be even more severe. And not only will they lose their father, but likewise they will lose their mother. And this is the example of our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His father died while he was... Uh, in the in the womb of his mother, and then whenever he's six, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his mother died as well, and he was raised without a mother and a father, and this is the case of of many of the children, they are raised without parents, and they do not have a father to take care of them and to provide for them and to keep them safe, and to uh, pay for the house bill for them and to provide for them uh, electricity and internet and uh, clothing and food and uh, all types of wonderful things, chips and, 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 and drinks and cereal and milk and chicken and rice and wheat and bread and, 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 and until the end and new clothes and new shoes. Some children, they don't have fathers to do that for them. Their fathers died while they're little. Their fathers died while they're little. And others, they don't have mothers likewise. So if you have a father who takes care of you, yeah, yeah, my young student, or if you have a mother that takes care of you, my young student, or if you have both of them, then this is a great blessing and you should not abuse that. Because many people, they, they don't all have this blessing and they're orphans. If you can imagine now, those who are orphans, how hard it is for them. They have no one to take care of them. They have no one to take care of them. This is a very difficult situation to be in. For this reason, Al-Islam has encouraged the believers to take care of them. To take care of them. If we know that there are orphans from the Muslims especially, then we take care of them and we help them. And we do not abuse them. And we're not rude to them or mean to them. This is what this chapter is about. So Al-Bukhari, he mentioned... His chain of narration, Rahimahullah to Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As-sa'i ala al-armala wal-masakeen. 
كل مجاهد في سبيل الله وكل الذي يسوم النهار ويقوم الليل. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, the one who goes about helping the widows, the one who goes about helping the widows and the poor people, he is like somebody who's fighting in the path of Allah. And he is like somebody who is fasting all day long and standing in the prayer all night long. Can you imagine that? If somebody fasted all day long for the sake of Allah, and then whenever the night comes, he's standing in the night prayer all night long. After completing the obligations, he doesn't stop worshiping all day long. He's fasting. And then the night comes and everybody goes to sleep. Not him. He stands up and he prays all night long, all the way till Fajr. Do you think he has a great reward? Yes, he has a great reward with Allah Azza wa Jal. You know who has a reward like that? The one who takes care of the widows. And the one who takes care of the poor people. What is a widow? A widow is somebody who her husband died. It's a woman who had a husband and then her husband died. And many times the, those who are a widow, those who are widows, they have, they have children. They have children. So sometimes the father will die and he will leave a wife behind with children. And it's very difficult for her. And it's very hard for her. So therefore in Islam, it's highly encouraged to know who those women are and to take care of them and to provide for them and to give to them in charity. To know those single mothers who are striving and, and, and who are try, trying to be upright, but they're faced with financial difficulties and economical hardship and, and it's difficult for them and they barely can... Uh, pay for their bills and they can barely feed their children. These women right here, it's highly encouraged for believers to look after them and to give them money and to find ways to help them and to give them food and to send things to them uh, directly or indirectly and uh, to not leave them to ask and to beg the people, but rather to take care of them before they even have to ask. The one who does this, he has the reward like somebody who's fighting in the path of Allah. And he has the reward of somebody who's fasting all day long and praying all night long. So this is a great, great, great encouragement to take care of those weak people. The people who are weak and in hardship, like the women who do not have husbands and the children who do not have fathers and the poor who do not have wealth. These people, it's encouraged and it's a great, 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 great deed in Islam to take care of them. After this Bukhari, he says, Babu Fadli man yu'udu yatiman lahu. And now it is the chapter of the one who takes care uh, of uh, an orphan for him. Uh, of an orphan for him. Yani this is one of the one who takes care of an orphan. And then this is about one the one who helps somebody else take care of an orphan. Yani taking care uh, of somebody else's child. And he's somebody who he, he can either uh, take care of the orphan himself. Or he knows somebody else who has, is taking care of the orphan. And he can help them out also. He can help them out also. So now Bukhari, rahimahullah, he has another chain of narration, this time to Aisha, radiyallahu anha, zawj al-Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the wife, the wife of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qalat, she said, ja'at nimra'atun ma'aha ibnatani laha, that a woman, she came to me, and she had two daughters, and she had two daughters, فَسَأَرَتْنِي فَلَمْ تَجِدْ عِنْدِي إِلَّا تَمْرَةً وَحِدًا A woman came to me and she had two daughters and she asked me for some food and then she didn't find with me anything except for one date. She didn't find anything with me except for one date. فَأَعْطَيْتُهَا So I gave it to her. فَقَسَمَتْهَا بَيْنَ إِبْنَتَيْهَا And so she split it between her two daughters. ثُمَّ قَامَتْ فَخَرَجَتْ And then she got up and left. فَدَخَرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَحَدَثْتُهُ At this time the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he came in and I told him about this. فَقَالَ مَنْ يَلِي مِنْ هَذِهِ الْبَنَاتِ شَيْئًا فَأَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهِنَّ كُنَّ لَهُ سِطْرًا مِنَ النَّارُ the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever takes care of some of these girls, and he's some of these girls here like this, that are orphans in this manner, and that are in need, and he is nice to them and good to them, then they will be a shield and a veil that will protect them from the hellfire. That will protect them from the hellfire. So we see this is another example 
of the great charity and kindness and the niceness of Aisha radiallahu anha. And we've seen before that a woman came with two little boys and uh, she asked for some food. And she, at that time, she didn't have anything except for three dates. So she gave them all three a date. And then the boys, they ate the dates real fast and then they're looking at the mother's date and the mother's like, oh no, I didn't even eat mine. And then she sees that her, her boys really want the date, so she split it in half and gave each of them a half and she didn't even eat anything, the mother. So here we have Aisha radiallahu anha. She didn't eat anything and she gave everything away to the, to the poor people and then the mother didn't even get to eat. Rather, she gave everything away to her sons. Now we have another example similar to that, but this time it's a woman, she came with two with two girls. And this is an indication, Wallahu alam, that the people in Medina at that time, they know that if they're hungry, they can go to Aisha. Aisha is going to give them some food if they have anything. And that these women, that they would go to her often and ask her. And they know that she's kind and that she will not turn them down. Because here we have again now that this woman, she's coming to Aisha, she has two daughters with her. She has two daughters with her. And she's asking for food. But look at the case now. Now, they look for some food in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha and they don't find anything except for one date. One date. What did Aisha do radiallahu anha? Did she split it? <laughs> no, she gave the whole thing to them. She gave the whole thing to them. She didn't keep anything for herself. Again, radiallahu anha. She gave it all to, to the woman. This is all I have, one date. You can have it. And then the woman, she looked at it and she didn't split it with her children. Likewise, rather, she split it and gave it both to her children. And she didn't take anything for herself either. And she didn't take anything for herself either. At this time, the Prophet wasallam was informed of this. And he mentioned the, the narration that whoever takes care of the girls like this, and those girls who are in need, and those girls who are weak, and they don't have anybody to take care of them, and they're poor, and they need help, and whoever is nice to them, then this will be a means for them to veil them and to curtain them and to shade them and to protect them from from the hellfire from the hellfire so this is a great encouragement to be to be generous and to give charity and this is a great encouragement likewise to have al ithar what is al ithar what is al ithar this word we're learning about we have to learn to 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 apply these traits hmm. we want to know these uh, characteristics and then use them and he thought is to prefer others. It's to prefer others. You, Aisha, she, she, the only food she has in her house is one date. And then if somebody asked for it, and she even didn't even keep it for herself, she gave it away. She's not like, well, Afwan, I only got one date, and he, just, just enough for me. Uh, Afwan, she said, radiallahu anha, tfadlal, go ahead, you can have it. And even then, the mother... The mother didn't uh, take any portion of that. Likewise, she preferred her daughters over herself. And this is the case of the righteous. And this is the case of the mothers as well. And some children, they don't realize this. That their mothers are sacrificing many, many things for their children to be happy. And their children to be nice. Sometimes the mother, she will work hard. And make effort and uh, go through difficulty just to get a few dollars. And as soon as she has those few dollars, she spends it all immediately on her child. She spends it all immediately on her child. This is something that the child should realize and should be thankful about. Because maybe the mother could spend that money on many other things. More beneficial for her specifically that she likes. But instead she prefers her child and spends it on her child to see her child smile. And to be happy. And then sometimes some of those children, they turn around and they be mean. And they talk bad to their mother even after the mother made this great sacrifice. This is not nice. We should not be like that. This is not from Al-Karam. This is not from Al-Karam. Rather, this is from Al-Lu'um. The opposite of Karam is to have bad manners and to be uh, despicable and to not show thanks and to be ungrateful. Being ungrateful is a bad trait. The, being ungrateful is the trait of the people of the hellfire. What do you billah? What I tell you do akhtarahum shakirin. Shaitani told, he said that you will not find many of the people to be thankful. And that's the case. Wa qarirun min ibadi shakur. And not very few of my slaves, Allah, he said, are thankful. May Allah make us from his thankful slaves. We should be thankful for the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise, we should be thankful for uh, our parents who take care of us and look after us and help us. This is something that is very important.
That you show thanks to Allah and you show thanks to your parents. And to Allah you are returning. Meaning he's going to hold you accountable. Meaning he's going to hold you accountable. Also in these narrations we see the great benefit of the righteous actions. And the one who performs righteous deeds, he has great reward with Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise it's a means to be protected from the hellfire. So if somebody wants to be safe from the hellfire, what does he have to do? What is the means to have a shield and a protection from the hellfire? He has to have sincere faith and righteous actions. He has to have good deeds. Uh, and those good deeds have to be done for the sake of Allah. So al-iman al-sadiq wal amal al-sadiq, this is what will protect you from the hellfire. True and sincere faith coupled with good and righteous actions. This is the means of having a protection from the anger of Allah and from the hellfire. And this is the good way. After this, Al-Bukhari, he mentioned some more narrations and we close with this. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم